Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone who's connected with me on here and to the new people who may just be checking me out for the first time. Happy New Year to you too. It has been a good while since I have been live. I've been very busy while also trying to enjoy downtime, trying to have that balance there. But I wanted to hop on here for a moment while the spirit hit me and while an idea was brewing inside me. Well, I don't know if I would call it an idea, but more like something that I felt was very timely as it's a question that is often asked by speakers and aspiring speakers especially. What is that question you might ask? Where do I find stories? How do I find stories to include in my speeches? Where do I find these tales that are great to include? Because we know that stories are needed because they don't just entertain our audience, they also educate our audience. Stories serve a vital purpose in speeches. They entertain, they educate. We learn some of, hey, Neek. We learn some of our best lessons through stories. And science proves that. I don't want to get the statistic, the fact wrong, but it's something like, I think we're 60 times more likely to remember a fact if it's wrapped within a story than if you just dump that fact on itself. So that tells you that stories are very powerful. So I wanted to hop on quickly. I'm not gonna be on here long today, but I wanted to talk about how you can find those stories. And it's not as difficult as you think. It's not as, um, it's, it's not as time consuming. One word, and I want you to remember this, one word that's gonna help you when you're trying to get stories for your speeches, you have to be, here's the word, you have to be observant, observant. If you are someone who is observant, you will never run out of ideas for stories. You will always have your chest of stories that you can pull from to include in any speech that you're working on. What do I mean by being observant? I mean, just look around at what's happening in your everyday life. You do not need something super out of the ordinary, uh, something that someone has never heard in order for that to be an interesting story that someone is going to remember in your speech. I tell my clients, everyday real life works. Everyday real life situations are usually what make people laugh the most anyway. Think about when you go to see a comedian. What do we laugh at? What do we laugh at the most when we go see a comedian? What makes us laugh? What makes us just have that deep belly laugh? It's not knock knock jokes, right? It's not knock knock jokes. Hey, Nick. It's not knock knock jokes, it's not riddles. What makes the audience laugh is when the comedian makes an observation about real life, right? Wouldn't you agree? That's what makes us just crack up. Something that he says that probably is true for the majority of humans, something that probably most of us have experienced at some time in our experience living on this earth. It's something that's pretty universal. That's what makes the audience laugh and comedians know this. So it behooves speakers to use that same strategy when you are trying to think about stories for your speeches. So here's what I mean about being observant. Something happened to me last night that after it happened, like I really had to chuckle. I had to laugh at myself. I had to laugh. So 
I was going through the drive through and I wanted to order a cod filet fish sandwich. And from my side, I wanted to order broccoli, a side of steamed broccoli, and I had water. Okay, so you got that? I had a cod fish sandwich, I had a side of broccoli, and I had water. Went and paid for my food, drove around, and I was waiting for them to give me my food. They gave me my food, smelled so delicious, I could not wait to tear into it. I drove around to the side of the restaurant because I actually had to use the bathroom. So went inside to the restrooms, came back out, dug into my bag, and what's inside of my bag? My fish filet sandwich is in there, but it's not my broccoli. What they gave me was french fries. They gave me french fries, you guys. Now, I am someone who loves french fries. French fries is like that little guilty pleasure of mine. I don't try to eat it super often. You know, once in a while, once in a while. But I had specifically asked for broccoli, <laughs> a side of broccoli at this place last night. They gave me french fries and you guys, these fries were not soggy. These fries were, they still had crisp to them. They were nice and hot. They were just like how you expect to get your fries when you go to fast food places. They were perfect, in other words. Now, what happens when a fast food place gets your order wrong normally? What happens when you've looked in your bag and you've seen that you've had, you've got the wrong order? How do you feel? What do you do? What do you say? You feel upset. You might actually drive back to the fast food place or go back inside. I hadn't driven off. I was sitting in a parking lot eating. You probably go back inside and say, hey, you got my order wrong. You know, I didn't ask for french fries. I asked for broccoli. You might say a, a few words in your car, a few short words that, you know, we don't want to repeat around children because you were upset that they got your order wrong. Now, what did I do in this situation? I just told you I like french fries. I was purposely trying to make a, a semi-healthier meal by ordering a side of broccoli with those with that fish sandwich. And guess what? I got french fries instead. I'm like, Jesus, if you want me to have french fries, please just tell me. I'm, I'm just accepting that this is what you wanted from me. You wanted me to have these french fries, right? <laughs> just tell me, Lord, you wanted me to have these french fries. What did I not do? I did not go back into the fast food place and change out my meal. I did not tell them, hey, you got my order wrong. I asked for broccoli and you gave me french fries. No, 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 no. I sat there in my car and I ate those french fries. And I happily ate those french fries. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's those little things in life that make the best stories. Because you know what? My reaction, what I just told you, how normally we would respond if someone got our, our order wrong at the fast food window, that's how most of us would act normally. We'd be upset that they got our order wrong. If we were still in the parking lot like I was, you'd probably go back inside and ask them to correct your order. I did not this time. This is probably the one time in history where I was okay with them making a mistake. Okay? So that's what I mean. This could actually be a story for a speech that I'm giving. Of course, it depends what the speech is about. If this story would fit, depends on the context and whatnot. But this is what I mean by observing those things in life. I really sat in the parking lot in my car and I had to laugh at this because I said I would be upset any other time. And I just sat there and was like, oh, they got my order wrong.
I should have put it on Do Not Disturb. But I didn't get upset. I sat there and just ate the french fries. Let me give you one other example of what I mean by you will always have stories if you are observant. So this had to be, I think, a couple years ago now. I was on a flight. This was a particularly packed flight. When I got on the plane and I had my little rolling suitcase and the flight attendant, because I'm looking, looking down the aisle and I can tell that probably all of the overhead bins, they're filled or almost filled anyway. I wasn't sitting in first class. I was you know, just sitting in, in coach, but it looked like all of the overhead bins were filled. So I voiced my concern to the flight attendant. I said, I'm not sure if my suitcase is going to fit. And I don't have a large suitcase. It's, you know, just a regular medium sized suitcase. Normally it could fit in is what I'm saying, but I was not confident it would fit, that there was space for it. So the flight attendant, he said, okay, just, just wait here at the front with the suitcase. And, you know, other people were filing into the plane, other passengers, and they were going to their seats. So then the flight attendant came back over to me after a few minutes and he said, okay, he said, come on. He said, we're going to, we're going to uh, put it in first class. And I said, oh, oh, it get to get to be in first class. And he looked at me and he said, your suitcase. Oh, oh, my <laughs> suitcase. Yes, of course. He took my suitcase and he put it in the overhead bin in first class. And then I proceeded to walk myself down the aisle to my coach economy seat. My suitcase made it to first class before I did. Again, I had to laugh about this situation, just the humor in it all when I sat down in my coach seat. My suitcase is in first class. And I'm sitting here in my coach seat. This is life, you guys. This is life. See what I mean? I'm telling you these stories as examples. File these experiences away. File them away. Or actually, put a note in your phone. Put a note in your phone so you don't forget them. You will always have a repository of stories that you can go back to when it, it fits the right speech, okay? But stories are all around us. That's the message I wanna get across to you. Stories are all around us in our everyday life. Think about the conversations that you have with your friends, your family members, strangers, acquaintances. There's a lot of humor, a lot of stories you can piece out of those conversations even. Think about it. Just be observant in your everyday life and you will never run out of material, okay? So that is my tip today for how you can find stories. Stories are around us if we just remain observant. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful. If if you ever thought about it this way, about just being observant, that can help you come up with a lot of story ideas, okay? If you're watching a replay, put replay in the comments too. All right, I will see you soon. I'm about to log off. I got a client to work with today. Happy New Year, everyone. And I promise I'm gonna be doing more live videos regularly. All right, have a great day.